Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be seeing what it looks like to be inside a spherical mirror. So ever since I saw Vsauce's video about a simulation of what it would look like inside of a spherical mirror, I always wanted to try the experiment in real life for myself. I wanted to try to actually film inside of a spherical mirror. But it turns out that's actually pretty difficult to do. The first reason is because whatever camera you're using usually will block the view around it. So you need a tiny camera. And the other thing is, is you need a good source of light. So I bought a laparoscopic camera. These cameras are very tiny and you can manipulate them to be in any position you want. And also it has lights coming out of directly where the camera is as well. So what I'm going to be doing is sticking the laparoscopic camera inside of the spherical mirror to see what it looks like. Now I've had a lot of questions about what happens to light inside of a spherical mirror. Will it just bounce back and forth forever and stay forever illuminated inside the sphere? Well if we just look at the hemisphere, you'll find out why that can't happen. So the first thing to notice is that inside of the hemispherical mirror, the very center of it seems to be the brightest, whereas the edges seem to just be dark. So it seems like the middle of it is most reflective and the sides aren't really that reflective. Now the reason it appears brighter in the middle is because these are the rays of light that only undergo one reflection. Everything outside of this sphere here is undergoing one reflection, two reflections, three reflections, four reflections, and so on. You can see when I place the pencil here, how you can see its single reflection in the center. And then you can see another reflection here, another one here, another one here, another one here, and it gets darker and darker and darker. That's because as it undergoes the reflection, not all of the light is reflected, some of it is absorbed. So the more it reflects, the more light gets absorbed, so the darker image you see. Until eventually, all of the light bounces back and forth, and so you don't see any light. So any light that makes it into the spherical mirror will quickly bounce back and forth until it's completely extinguished. The first amazing thing about the spherical mirror is watch what happens when I put my finger inside of the mirror. The reflected image seems to come out of the mirror. It has this amazing 3D appearance. It looks like the reflection is actually sticking out of the mirror. It's so cool. So it looks like I'm actually twirling my finger around itself. Now you can't quite capture this on camera, but it looks so amazing in real life. It looks like the finger is actually popping out at you. So the hemispherical mirror can make for some really cool illusions. For example, look at this red piece of clay I put in there. Now watch what happens when I try to knock it off the cardboard. Can't get it. That's because it's not there. It's actually on the bottom side of the cardboard here. <laughs> When you fill it with water, it's really hard to tell where any of the surfaces actually are. It's hard to tell where the beginning of the mirror starts, the beginning of the water starts. So like reaching into it, I can't even tell where the water is going to start. And once you fill it around 70 to 80% full of water, you get this floating ball effect. So it looks like there's this spherical glass ball inside of there. It almost looks like I have this round ball inside of there now. So first let's see what it looks like when you slowly start closing it. Watch as they come together. It looks like there's this bubble in the center that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now instead of moving the camera inside of the spherical mirror once it's in there, what I'm going to be doing is closing the two hemispheres around the camera and seeing what it looks like. So it's going to simulate what it would look like if you were already enclosed in the spherical mirror and move from one side to the other, completely touching it to your face. Okay, here we go, let's try this. Three, two, one. Now as we go closer and closer, 
Notice that the camera's image reflected is going to come up to itself until it completely fills its own field of view. And then it's basically going to go inside of itself and then the reflection is going to move further away from itself even though the hemisphere is moving closer. And then as you move even further, the reflection is now going to come closer to its own, to the true camera until eventually they touch. So what this looks like is basically the reflection of the camera looks like it goes into itself, moves away, and then comes back and touches itself again. Now you can break this up a little further and see what's going on a little better when we just take one hemisphere and film the laparoscopic camera going into that. Now it's almost the same thing but it's a little bit different because you don't get the reflection of the hemisphere behind it. So it's a little bit less disorienting and you can see a little bit more what's going on. And you can also see what it looks like if you're not viewing it from the first person. So if you're viewing the laparoscopic camera going into the hemisphere. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.